Hey, good morning all, or good afternoon, wherever you might be. Uh, it's actually the 9th of um, October, it's Sunday, so I thought I'd do a quick one, run through of the stock market to start with. I thought I'd try something new this week, break my webinars up into two or three different uh, videos so that you don't have to look through stuff that you're not interested in. So this is all about the stock markets. Um, where should we start? US E mini S&P. Okay, clearly in a bear trend for this year. Uh, this, this goes back uh, to 2020. Uh, so I've got loads of fib levels on there. I love a bit of fib action, as you can tell. Uh, 200 week moving average. That's absolutely crucial. Now we bounced off it um, at the beginning of last week, and I thought we'd have a good run up. We didn't quite make it to some of my targets. I thought 3860 would be a good target. Um, you know, just from just for fib levels and some previous um, price action, we got to 3820. So we didn't quite get as far as I thought we would. Now you can see we've got a long upper wick there on the weekly candle for the e-mini S&P, small green body. Uh, the market turned around quite, uh, was hit quite hard on that um, uh, non-farm payroll number on Friday, slightly stronger than expected, not but not particularly out of line, but I think it's just the message is, is, is starting to hit home. I don't know why it's taken so long. The Federal Reserve is going to raise rates no matter what, and they're not going to bring them down next year. Now, the message is very, very clear from the Fed, but the markets just seem to be absolutely stuck on this idea that, oh, the Fed's going to pivot, the Fed's going to pivot. We get a weak number and the Fed's going to pivot. I don't see it myself. I really don't. Um, and I think we are now, well, we are very, on very shaky ground. This 200-week moving average is literally the only thing that is holding this market up now. Um, I, and after last week's failed attempt to, to, have a, to have a decent recovery. You know, we had Monday, Tuesday, a good run. And we, we caught that run, didn't we? So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Tuesday certainly was a very good day after the, uh, the bullish engulfing candle that we had on Monday. That was, that was the thing that I thought, okay, we've, we've ha we had a bullish engulfing candle uh, in the middle of the week before. We had the bullish engulfing, that was Wednesday, I think. We had a bullish engulfing candle on Monday. And I thought, okay, these two candles at the 200 day moving average in oversold conditions are telling me we're going to get a decent recovery at least up to 3860 that would have been my target and i would have been trying a short position there um but we didn't quite make it we missed it by 40 points uh the bears quickly got control of this market you know that's pretty disappointing two big green candles you know bigger than we've had for a significant period of time and just no follow through so um fortunately i took profit on my longs there more out of luck than judgment i'll, I'll be honest because um, I did think we were going to get there and I was going to try a short. But the market turned around. Uh, I didn't manage to get into a short position myself. I don't know whether you did. Um, and I didn't trade on Friday, so I missed this move to the downside anyway. I do, it, Thailand is too late for me. By the time the number comes out, it's half past eight at night. Uh, and I'm not really in the mood for getting into positions at half past eight at night on a Friday. More in the mood for getting into some beers. So um, we clearly remain in a bear trend for the S&P. You know, quite a steep trend really obviously we do get these very sharp bounces which is very characteristic of a uh, of a bear trend uh, a bull trend uh, a bull sorry a bear market bounce is always pretty brutal swift powerful but doesn't last too long so now as i say the question is do what about the 200 week moving average uh, does that hold or do we break lower i don't know when we'll break lower but i think we will break lower eventually maybe it won't be this week but uh, I'm just trying to give you an exact value of the 200 week moving average. 50, 50, uh, 3588 is the exact value. That has been holding very important levels of support. We're actually looking at the monthly chart now. That's the 50 month moving average, that black line. Comes in at 10,961. Now we bounced early last time. That was back in June. We bounced just above the 38.2% um, fib, which is at 10,760. We haven't quite hit that level yet. We got to 10,890. How does that look on the weekly chart? Not quite so good. We've actually broken the 200 week moving average in the NASDAQ. We did try a decent bounce of it, but again, of course, long upper wick, the actual green body is even smaller than the one on the um, E-mini S&P. And we've got, now that we've broken the 200 week moving average and closed below it for two weeks on the trot. So not good. 38.2% um, VIB, uh, 10,760. That is the next target. You'd see we've got some swing lows down here, 10,656. So matches up with some price action. We're just starting to get, well, we had a real nice um, unwind of the oversold situation on the weekly, on the weekly uh, slow stochastic, getting into oversold territory, but you know we can stay oversold for at least a couple of months, two or three months easily. So we're only just entering that sort of condition. Um, and really, 
I don't I don't have much hope for this. T closing for two weeks below the 200 week moving average isn't particularly isn't good, is it? We were very oversold for uh, two or three weeks on the da on the daily chart, but again, the, the bounce really wasn't that it wasn't that impressive at all. You know, I would have loved to have seen up around twelve thousand two hundred. That would have been a tremendous selling opportunity. We didn't even get. Well, did we get halfway there? Maybe halfway, and then we turned around. So we're not. We didn't even really hit much of a resistance level. Uh, we hit maybe the one hundred period moving average on the four hour chart. We got close to the five hundred hour moving average, but you know. For it to turn around and dump like that, it really does show that the bears are in are in control of these stock markets, and the bulls just can't get a grip uh, and, and 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 maintain any sort of control over these markets. Up with the U.S. markets on the Dow Jones, which has well below the 200 week moving 200 week moving average. Again, you know, we, we did manage to push up. Where did we 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 got a decent bounce of the 23.6 percent fib, so that was pretty good. Uh, 30,500, 30,600. We got to, that was a level for me, obviously, just because it was a FIB level. Uh, and we've got a trend line there. Let's actually move to the daily chart. It, obviously, this doesn't look good. Again, we rejected the 23.6% FIB, closed the week below the 200 um, week moving average again. We actually got a, a new low at 28,635. Uh, that was actually on the Monday. Uh, we, uh, we were littered with the bullish engulfing candles on Monday. Another one there, of course. For the Dow Jones, which again led to a real good move to the upside, but not as far as I would have hoped. Well, thirty thousand five hundred, close enough. And we turned around. So again, look, you know, just just the trend line, the moving average. Sorry, the trend line and the twenty three point six percent fib from the beginning of January held the move to the downside, and we swiftly erased. Well, certainly uh, Tuesday's gain and, and almost half of Monday's gain doesn't look too good. The oversold situation has now been unwound, which for me opens the door to a break below the the low for the year so far which is at 28,635 so i see no reason at all to be bullish during europe is in such a horrible mess the dax is actually holding up quite well i don't know whether that's because of the weak euro the euro has obviously collapsed against the dollar maybe that is what is holding the market up i think we should be a lot lower um but anyway uh where did we get to uh this i think was the lower trend line of a, of a possible uh, bull flag, but it was certainly a trend line anyway of previous lows that held nicely. So 12,600, 12,700 was my uh, resistance level for the DAX, and we just turned around from there. So that looks pretty good as far as the technicals go. Uh, on the weekly chart, we've got plenty of room to the downside. Well, having said that, we've got the 500 week moving average giving us some support. Maybe that's why we bounced last week. Uh, so a break below sort of 11,750 would open the doors. It'll be like a trap door. Uh, you know the market will just go through there and then i think it will collapse so i think we stock markets are getting pretty close to the stage where they are going to vacuum uh, to the downside which is what i'm just waiting for that trigger point i think reality will, will set in that the fed is not going to save us this time and that they are going to stick with higher rates for longer they have to fight inflation the you know the ridiculous um credit and liquidity that has been provided for 20 years or, or something it's just, you know, this market has been uh, on a rock star party for, for a decade or, well, a decade and a half at least. Uh, class A drug fueled rock star party, this economy. Yeah, everyone is absolutely borrowed up to the eyeballs. Um, people are buying property like there's no tomorrow just because they think it's a one way street, buying cars that they can't really afford. You know, you, I go back to England and I see it everywhere. Um, BMWs, Mercedes, I, for, for years I've been saying this is insane. People can't possibly be earning enough money. Every single person cannot possibly be earning the kind of money that, the, to, to afford all these lovely new cars and people just going out and buying investment properties left, right and centre. Um, it has to come to a crushing end. It just has to. And I feel sorry for those people because it's not their fault. They're just doing what, what was obvious to make money. But it just can't, things like that do not ever last. Um, in the uh, you know, in the 80s and 90s, when when I started buying property, you just you, you, mortgage rates were at seven and a half percent. Getting them down to these ridiculous levels, it's, it was never going to last. Okay, um, we've got the FTSE now. FTSE holding up quite well. Again, two great big green candles, but it wasn't to last. Obvious resistance around 71, uh, uh, 71 double O, 72 double O. Markets turned around. The the pattern here isn't isn't quite so clear at all, actually, but. You know, is this a massive topping pattern? I can't really put my finger on it. Is that some sort of massive head and shoulders pattern? I mean, if it is, that is going to be horrendous. But we are definitely holding the 38.2% Fib at 68.05. So that is the one to watch. 
we broke below that in 22. That was the COVID. Uh, no, that wasn't. That was the first move to the downside uh, at the beginning of the year. Then we got the recovery, a strong recovery in the FTSE. I mean, the FTSE really has got this big sideways pattern. It's one of the only stock markets that I follow that actually has that. Uh, all the others have been trending lower. So it really is a question of whether we break 6,800, which I think we will do. But the chart, I will admit, is a lot more confusing. Okay, I'm going to go away and um, record a, a Forex video now. Um, if you like what I do, please like, share, subscribe, do all the usual stuff that really helps me out with my YouTube channel. And come and have a look at my website. Um, I do an S&P report. I do a DAX and FTSE report. Only £50 a month. Dirt cheap, especially now if you're buying from abroad because the pound is so cheap. Um, have a look. Oh, I've got a deal. I've got a deal. I'll put, I'll put the link in the, in the description box below. But you can get um, any report that you like. Uh, any one, any, whoops, any of these reports that I just showed you, uh, the 50 quid ones, you can, you can get more than one. And I'll give you, uh, well, for, I'll give you one for free if you click this link. I'll put it in the in description box below. Um, you, get, you get it free, saves you 50 quid. All you've got to do is click the link here. It takes you to my recommended broker. Open an account, stick $100 in it. And once you've done your first trade, I will give you a month's free subscription to the market of your choice. Um, and and there, there are all the choices on my website. Uh, you just go to the menu and click daily analysis and signals and that will give you all the markets that I cover. And have a look at my blog. I do try to post, actually I posted the FTSE uh, um, report on my blog for Monday. So have a look at there, go to the blog, click on that one. You'll get, you'll get the, the levels for, for uh, the beginning of the week there for free on my blog. And I do up, update that quite regularly. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, good luck trading this week. We'll, we'll chat again next week.